What's up, everybody? If you hear that scary Halloween music this time of year, you know it can only mean one thing. It's the graveyard shift with Michael. That's me in the dead of night with your daily trivia question. Yet once again, weekend's over, folks. Weekend is over. Happy Monday. Time to get back to the grind. New week, new opportunities, and away we go. So the answer to the previous trivia question was, of course, if you guys are from the 70s like me, you will know this, the Atari 2600 VCS, the one and only original Atari. This was the so-called, so let's let's, let's do some history here. So the so-called gaming systems in the early to mid-70s were pretty bad. <laughs> they were they were really bad. And in the larger scheme of things, the Atari was was you know ended up being pretty bad too, but it was the first and foremost of its kind. It was, the, the 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 early brands of these things consisted of a custom chip for each game, which as far as gaming was concerned was pretty impractical, okay? Think of think of it like uh going like in an arcade, you know, you're going from one whole complete gaming system to another to play single games to play individual games right it's about the best analogy i can give you so designers from a company called atari you may have heard of that in grass valley california at the time began working on what they refer to as a video computing system vcs that would kind of reverse the process in a way and simplify usage and a lot a lot of times when i study technology and stuff like this a lot of times when you reverse things that have been it ends up simplifying things and this was this was exactly the case okay and let me try and explain it a little better so the new system they came they were to come up with was to be based on a microprocessor for its hardware it would sync and be compatible with a standard television interface in other words you could plug it up to your tv and it, it was compatible with with all kinds of TVs. I remember when I got my Atari, I I could plug it up to my black and white. Yes, I'm old enough to have had a black and white TV down in the basement, my parents' house. And we could plug it up to the the new and improved color TV that we had upstairs, okay? It was was compatible with, with that interface. And here's the kicker that changed what would become the gaming world. It was based on swappable cartridges that were essentially the, the different gaming systems. Okay, so the software or the different games and their different designs and the different cartridges and so forth would do as much, would do m- m- as much of the work as possible in the technological aspect of things. And, and where the, whereas the hardware would just be the standard hardware that would be compatible with swapping out these cartridges. And this, of course... Uh, over time meant that the hardware the price of the hardware could come down okay it's it's standard standard product marketing uh, okay that kind of model but but the, the the way that they put it together was was genius folks you had a brand new uh, gaming system in, introduced to the world basically it was released on september 11th of 1977 which was the focus of the trivia question and it ranks as one of the most successful micro processor based products ever built for the for gaming in fact it was one of the first there was over 12 million units sold in the first six years of of its production its release at about 140 dollars a piece okay so you do the math on that folks that's just that's just mad mad money out in california right so eventually the atari 2600 vcs would would come bundled with two joystick controllers a pair of paddle controllers and a complimentary game that came with it. Uh, this included early early versions included Pong, and then when it became popular, you could get Missile Command or even Pac Man for free. I am old enough, folks. I'm going to tell you, I am old enough to have gotten one of the very first earliest versions of these things, and they were big old huge jalopies, right? And mine came with Pong. <laughs> That's that is how old. I actually am. Pong. I remember having Missile Command and Pac-Man, but I, I remember those as coming later and buying them, buy them individually. So by 1983 into 84, games for the 2600 were using more than four times the storage size of the games when it was originally launched. Okay, So more was packed in, more design was packed into these cartridges, whereas the hardware stayed the same. Okay. Again, they just reversed the process, made made tons of money. So each time they wanted to come up with a new game, they'd release one of these new cartridges. Whereas, where again, as the the hardware would stay the same, you just swap out the cartridges. More advanced visual games 
later on down the line included Raiders of the Lost Ark, games like Pitfall, and E.T., the extraterrestrial. Let me tell you about, and then it was off and running for them. It was just, just a, you know, a, a, a million into billion dollar industry at that point. Everyone had to have an Atari unit. I remember getting my Atari. I was one of the first people on my block at the time in suburban D.C., Got a military family, got a got an Atari. Most instantly became the most popular kid on the block. That was the kind of uh, uh, how it resonated w when you got one of these things. Instantly, I had people I had never seen in my life coming over and hanging out in my basement. Now, now they're my friends. Now they won't be my best friend because I got Pac Man, I got Missile Command, I got. Hang on, my beeper's going off. I got Pong. I was the Pong champion, by the way. I think I mentioned that in the trivia question. But now everybody wants to hang out with Michael, right? Because I had an Atari, man. I was, I was, I was the happen. We were the happening family because we had an Atari. Forget about everything else. We had an Atari. So let's get back to ET. Speaking of ET and the release of ET, let me just make sure that beeper call wasn't for me. No, it's all good. So ET, e the extraterrestrial. This turned out to be. A disaster. Now, this was long, long down the line in the in the Atari development, right? ET was rushed to the market for the holiday season of that particular year, and it had all kinds of flaws built into it. And usually, with Atari, when a new game would come out, it was a big, huge deal. Everybody would rush to the store and get it. And this was the same with ET. Now, when when it came out and everybody plugged it up to play it, serious gamers at the time picked up on all of these flaws, and it quickly very quickly and it was considered a commercial failure it flopped instantly and not only did it flop but it had a disastrous effect on atari i remember this very well it would eventually be considered the factor at et this one game in ending atari's relevance in the console market and again this was a time when other developments were coming out i think like in television was, was coming out. I remember in television in a really cool Dungeons and Dragons game, etc. You guys go from there who are from the 70s into the 80s. You know what I'm talking about, right? E.T. Uh, e. and Atari phased out real quick. It was the eventual downfall that reverberated through the industry, all because of E.T. and the Atari 2600. It was really kind of an embarrassment, actually. Um, the so-called gaming crash of 1983 would soon follow as gaming companies uh, were developing, and they, they, they were popping up everywhere at that point. New systems were being developed, and suddenly I wasn't cool anymore. <laughs> as soon as an Intellivision moved into the block down the road, I was like, ah, forget about Michael. We don't want to hang out with him anymore in his Atari. Come on, that's old school. I was still the Pong champion. Thank you very much. And I, uh, I remember E.T., I mastered, mastered E.T. one holiday season when we were, oh, well, Christmas break. I, I, I plugged it in and played it until I, I had mastered it, and I could do it in like five, ten minutes. Ah, simpler times. There's an Atari 2600 in the Smithsonian Institute. It's one of the very first and most innovative gaming systems ever. I wish I would have held on to my original one. Now you can get them like in bargain bin on 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 Amazon anywhere and they come with like 500 games now but um back in the day that was the thing the Atari 2600 all right folks like I said before off we go running into a brand new week back to the grind here we go brand new trivia question for September 12th this is a really cool trivia question folks see if you can get this pay attention on this day in 1964 a movie by director Sergio, Sergio Leone starring Clint Eastwood in his first leading role called A Fistful of Dollars ushers in a brand new and unique category of Western films. And because they were produced and directed by Italians, they became known as this. Good luck, folks. Go have yourself a marvelous Monday and a wonderful week. And have some fun, too. Thanks for all you do. Appreciate every one of you all. Peace out.